Hey there, book lovers. So glad you're joining me on this again and again author interview. This month, we're talking with Kara Snyder, the author of the children's picture book, There's an Elephant on My Chest, to be released August 1st. I am so excited to share this book and this sweet author with you. Be sure to stay to the end to find out who we will be chatting with next month and subscribe below for more book fun. Enjoy our chat. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Karis. We're so glad to have you here to chat today. How are you doing this summer? Uh, we are doing great. We are loving summer, wanting it to slow down so it'll last a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Exactly. I was, was it? We always look forward to summer because it is a lot slower pace. But then my oldest is going into high school, and he decided to join the cross country team, and that means six thirty a.m. practices all summer long. So hey, that was I, I get it. different. Yes, my daughter is also going into high school this year, and their Ooh. basketball team had early summer practice all of June. Wow. Like we had to be there at six a.m. So yep. I I feel you a hundred percent. I get it. <laughs> yeah, so high school sports is completely different. That's <laughs> right. Like, oh, okay. This is a whole nother level here. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Well, Karis, I wanted to just kind of start with you telling us a little bit about you and your family. Absolutely. We live in Alabama. If you hear that Southern accent, that is why we live in the South. I, we've been here pretty much. I've li never lived in any other state. Um, so this is where we've been. My husband and I, we've been married almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years for us next April. We have two daughters, which is wild. I grew up with brothers. So this girl, the whole girl thing, I'm like, okay, God, good sense of humor here. This is going to be, it's going to be. Right. I have but three we, boys and only one sister. So, okay. Yes. God so, likes to shake things up. A he little does. Bit. He likes to keep us, you know, on our toes, always looking to him. So, but we, I love them. They're so much fun. Zoe, like I said, she is going in ninth grade, plays basketball. My daughter, Allie, is going into fifth grade, and we are trying volleyball this year. Okay. Brand new sport. Uh, so she's done well with it so far. I think she's going to continue to do great. And we also, for anyone who has pets, you include your pet, you know, when you talk about your family, yes. we have a mini golden doodle. His name is Cooper Hash Brown. Um, and he is my kid's quite the following, him. doesn't he? He is, he, he is something, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, we, he will be six in October and when we got him. My daughters were like, mom, he looks like the color of a tater tot. Can we call him hash brown? I was like, oh. Okay, that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, so we we have fun around here. We try to. You, my husband is the fun parent. I'm the more, you know, serious. Let's get things done kind of personality. But I am. I'm grateful for them. Grateful just for how guys just been leading in our life, and and that's kind of kind of a little bit about us. <laughs> too fun. And my husband brings the fun around our house too. So I can totally understand that and thankful for those absolutely. personalities that join into our lives. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, since we're in the middle of summer, I thought we'd have a couple questions about summertime. Okay. So are you a beach person or a mountain person? Okay. I think if, between these two, I would probably pick beach. But if you threw theme parks in there, theme park. That's what I would do, but it's not there. So I'm picking beach. Picking gotcha. Beach. <laughs> There's always like some sort of amusement park near a beach, right? That's right. <laughs> Too fun. Okay. Then this one gets a lot of arguments in our house. Okay. Popsicles or ice cream? Oh, I'm hands down ice cream. Yes. Yeah. Now you're now. Okay. I'm from Texas. Okay. So bluebell is really the only ice cream that there is. Is that true in Georgia too? Uh, you guys have Alabama, Bell? Alabama, so oh, Alabama, we have, sorry. No, it's, we're pretty much right there together. So they go, <laughs> you know, they go together. Um, we do Bluebell a lot, but there are a couple other options. But Bluebell, I mean, <laughs> you, you can't beat that. I can't beat it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> too fun but yeah it's it's always interesting when it comes to the ice cream truck it's like no 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 it's gotta be ice cream and like, yes. my kids are like popsicle popsicle no, I'm <laughs> with you <Gotta> be <laughs> too fun but okay so getting to your book which releases august 1st, august 1st. Yes. So exciting. Yes. I was kind of hoping that you would keep the date would stay on that 18th so I could I grab know. it before this but I know publishing is a hurry up 
been a weight gain, isn't it? It is. It is. All the things. Well, what was your inspiration for this uh, There's an Elephant on My Chest book? So I have written a lot of books um, on anxiety, just trying to help, you know, with adults, just for my own story of overcoming anxiety. There's books out there for adults and then tweens. And uh, I have a child development background and just the thought of being able to get a resource in the hands of children, parents, teachers, to have a way to talk about the subject of anxiety because mm -hmm. it is such a heavy subject and our children do deal with it and so you know we're right here back to school time maybe they're moving maybe they're having a, having a shift in friends or you know family dynamics and that can cause them to feel anxious and they're not sure what that is so that can feel scary um, and so that kind of was the inspiration just to give give them a resource our children our parents our teachers mm -hmm. to talk about this heavy weight and some healthy coping skills some healthy ways that they can respond when they might uh, come across an anxious situation mm -hmm. or feel those anxious feelings. Right, and it's, what is it? It's been an amazing, not in a good way, but that just that increase of anxiety since yeah. 2020. And I mean, what is it? When I was a kid, I don't think anxiety was ever talked about or, uh, yeah. I mean, I, if I felt anxiety, I had no idea it, what yeah. it was. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, anxiety right now is the number one mental health struggle for mm -hmm. every age group across the board. And that includes our kids. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And the sooner we can get them to recognize and build those coping skills in a healthy way is <laughs> make better adults one day. That's right. <laughs> That's the hope. That's the goal. Yeah. Right. Well, did you always want to be a children's author, Karis? Okay. If I had a drum roll, I would put the drum roll right here. But no, I did not want to always be an author. I, my ultimate goal in my life was to own my own daycare. Uh, I wanted to work with kids. I just, that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be my own boss, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. And I did get to run my own daycare uh, for one whole year. I did it for one whole year. And I was like, wait, <laughs> kids are great. Parents, on the other hand, that was something else to deal with. Uh, I was not a parent at that time in my life. I laugh at myself now because I am a parent and I don't know how I would have dealt, you know, with my own self as a parent, right. but um, it was great. And I had worked, you know, I've worked with kids almost 20 years, but um, yeah, this whole being an author speaker thing, it came kind of into play back in 2018, you know, God kind of led me on this path and I was just like, I don't know about this. I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, but I have learned so much. I've met so many wonderful people like you. And uh, it's just been, it's been great. You know, we as writers, we don't write for the money. We don't write for the fame. Right. We truly really write from a place of wanting to help others, you know, wanting to yeah. encourage others. Or if you're a fiction writer, you write in a way you want to bring, you know, happiness or joy uh, mm -hmm. into people's lives to help them through those struggles, those hard times. We just want to connect. Right. And I think because I love people so much, it has been a fun way to connect with people yeah. in written, you know, form. Very neat. Yeah, it's one of those you don't always expect. Not everybody that is a writer set out in their heart to do, but God doesn't, was it, he equips, but he doesn't always call the equipped, he equips the call. That's right. One or the other, yeah. someone. Yeah. <laughs> right. So sometimes we're brought to something that we had no idea that it's where God wanted us to be, but it just seems yeah. to be the right place. Because I know this topic is so big, and you've been able to write and encourage for all age ranges now. And I think, I know even in our home, your tween devotion is one that me and one of my kiddos is going through. And it's been fun just to have that conversation about anxiety at his age, and because he's my introvert quiet soul and like but we got to talk <laughs> I, love, I love that you're you said the word conversations mm -hmm. you know that's what we got to do we got to yeah. start having the conversations it doesn't mean we'll have the answers right. but we just need to start the conversation mm -hmm. so they'll keep coming right just keep, keep having those open lines of communication so that when they're faced with some feeling they don't understand no matter what it is they can see us as a source of information and safety so right that's right very cool okay now in all of your books there is a theme minus the carline conversations with them. <laughs> <laughs> but is an elephant your favorite animal 
An elephant is not my favorite animal. Uh, it is funny. I went to University of Alabama, and our mascot happens to be an elephant. Big Al is the mascot. Um, and some of my friends have helped me with other books in the past that they went to my, you know, Auburn, which is our big rival. And they're like, mm -hmm. we cannot help you with this book if it has to do anything with your Alabama <laughs> elephant. And I'm like, don't worry. It has nothing to do with um, Big Al. So I started out as a speaker uh, mm -hmm. before writing. And when I would share my story or talk about anxiety, I would describe it as a heavy weight, mm -hmm. like an elephant yeah. sitting on your chest, you know, just stomping up and down. And the harder you push alone against it, there was just nothing. You, you couldn't budget yeah. on your own. And so I've always kind of used that visual to help people kind of see for themselves if they've never experienced anxiety, wow. how heavy that weight is, even though you have no idea what that person may be dealing with in that moment, yeah. it's kind of that invisible weight. But then also to help those who are dealing with anxiety can say, yes, that is exactly what it feels like. That is the weight that mm -hmm. I'm feeling. That kind of brings more of a visual to people to understand. Right you know what what this really is that mm -hmm. that many of us have struggled with right it kind of it gives it personifies it gives it something tangible for you to <sighs> mentally grab onto so that you can start taking those stomp steps and yeah. to work towards um, identifying and fighting anxiety yeah so yeah. well what do you hope is the number one takeaway from this children's book I really hope that kids see that number one, they're not alone, that dealing with anxiety is normal. Like these, right. this is a normal thing. It's not just them. Uh, they're not messing up. They're not making mistakes. So they don't have to hide it because it is normal. It does happen. And that there are healthy ways that they can respond to it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and we've already kind of talked about this a little bit. If we can begin to help them learn how to incorporate these skills and it takes practice, right. you know, and it, you just got to do it every day, over and over. Even if you read the book, every day, over and over. But over time, it's going to help your brain to go back to that way of responding when that mm -hmm. anxiety response is kind of kicked off. And yeah. then you kind of know, oh, this is what it is. I don't have to be afraid. It's not just me. I'm not alone. And I have, mm -hmm. I have ways that I can respond that are healthy and that are going to help me continue forward. Because, you know, anxiety will kind of paralyze us traps us under that weight, right? Yeah. So this is gonna help them to move forward, to face those difficult situations, because we can't hide them from difficult mm -hmm. things as much yeah. as we would love to. So it's gonna equip them to respond to that anxiety. Yeah, I think that's gonna be an amazing takeaway from this book and just allowing, again, those conversations yeah. to continue, to equipping kids and parents with the words and the steps to conquer this I don't know, almost a cultural problem that we're having um, just with the rise in anxiety so but what was the uh, part of the book that was the most fun to work on so it was really fun to put in illustrator notes and kind of give the vision behind the book behind the character you know what to see on each spread of the book mm -hmm. as turn the pages and to kind of watch that kind of unfold you know i was my publisher with in game press victoria she would send me the sketch board where everything was kind of black and white and where they were going and what they were kind of looking at you know and just wanting to make sure we were all on the same page and then when i got to see the first spread in color i was like this is so it was just really cool to see <laughs> how that illustrator anna sebastian took my notes and that vision and she just made it into just some, it was just, it's a beautiful thing to just flip through the pages. And my kids, it blows their minds because Anna and I, we have not spoken to each other. We have not physically met. Mm -hmm. She was able to take those, you know, kind of ideas and to take the manuscript. And then we got the book and I'm just like, she nailed it. Like yeah. she just hit everything. So working with the illustrator, I've never done that before. And that really was very it was just really cool just to see how it all laid out and came together. Very cool. Now, kind of side question. Are you a very visual person to where those illustration notes were like, it really needs to say this? Or were you more flexible, just general idea of what yeah. it should be? 
I love that question. So I am a visual learner. You know, I do have that. I'm not very detailed though. I get like big pictures and then I'm, I'm like, okay, detail people, you, you go run with this, you know? And so my notes in some places were not as detailed as others. Mm -hmm. There were some, I posted a few weeks ago, uh, some characters that were inspired, you know, by, uh, by people in my life, by my dog. My dog was, you know, inspiration of the dog in the book. Um, and so I gave just kind of flexible notes in there and there were some things I put notes on and she did something completely different with because I was thinking kind of smaller, like just okay. close by mm -hmm. and he was able to have the ability to think of children um, around the world to help them all, you know, see themselves. So I love that she had that big picture yeah. vision where I wasn't there yet. So it kind of helped expand and help me to learn and grow in my thinking, you know, for future future books, if there are future ones, if that's where the Lord leads, it's going to help me to see in a bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. That's really neat. That's kind of what the get a bunch of creative minds together and you're going to come up with things that you never even thought you yeah. were going <laughs> to directions you might go. So that's really neat. I know for me and uh, working with an illustrator, it's always, even when I'm writing, I usually have to draw it out first just okay. because I am a visual person and like I can see what's going on in my head, but and sometimes that I have to see it before I can write it. Write it. And so it was interesting working with an illustrator also just to be like, okay, that's not how I saw it, but I kind of like yeah. it. Okay, we can work with this. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it was de it's definitely interesting to see how with different minds yeah. can uh, like, visualize different that's words. Right. So. I agree. I th yeah, that was probably my favorite part of all this. Way yeah. fun. And now, what did you say? You have two daughters. Yeah. What does your family think of your writing? They think it is really cool. Uh, well, I say cool. Okay, the tween, she thinks it's really awesome. And she's just, you know, um, last year it was really fun because her and her friends, they would write books in class every day and they would staple them together, you know. And uh, she, my daughter Allie, was like, please make the main character have my name. Can she please have my name? And I was like, sure, absolutely. <laughs> my teenager, she's like, well, I mean, what do you really do? Like, what, you know, what is this? So we, have, we try to talk a little more in depth kind of conversations and she thinks it's pretty neat to see that you know I, I, they watch me travel and speak and share the books they have copies of the books themselves and have even you know they inspired me uh, to write the tween devotionals they oh. they asked and will you please write books with words that we can understand mm -hmm. so it's, it's really neat to have them on this journey my husband he has been super supportive and he is actually the one that kind of pushed me out of the nest and said, hey, you gotta go to a writer's conference. Like, you have these ideas, you have this ability to speak, so you get, you gotta go, you gotta pick one and go. Mm -hmm. And so it was a birthday present back in 2019, he uh, picked one out, it was called the Speak Up Conference oh, in Grand Rapids, yeah. Michigan, for speakers and writers. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of been the one, I'm very introverted myself. You know, we kinda, you know, we, we kinda pull back, just let us hide behind yep. the scenes. We're, we're great there. Wallflower, like, wallflower. Yeah, flower. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, you know, God's given you these gifts and talents not to hide, mm -hmm. but to use. So he really pushed me forward and has just been, been kind of supportive. You know, when I, when I panic, when I freak out, I've had some panics here the last couple of weeks, I won't lie. He's like, hey, it's fine. It's all gonna be okay. So. <laughs> Um, so they've been very supportive. I did ask my teenager if, if I could use her name in the, the book, the children's book. She said, please don't. Please don't. I don't want to use my name. I know. You kind of have passed that age point of no return. <laughs> I know. That's why I asked for permission. Like, for if I do, this is not going to be good. <laughs> I'm having to, like with my blog I like there's a lot of things that have gone on with my older uh, son that I've learned a lot it's like I want to pass this on but I'm like okay I need to ask you yeah. first like I want to talk about this okay. and thankfully he's been very agreeable <laughs> so <That's> far <laughs> we might change as high yeah. school hits That's us so funny. <laughs> True. too fine well Karis what's been the most impactful book in your life other than the Bible okay so can I pick two? 
Can I okay, you? sure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, so the first one, um, if no one's read it, you need to get this. And it's an older book. Uh, well, th these are both going to be older. But The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. Mm -hmm. It talks about seven decisions in life that help you in success. And it's, a, it's based off of a fictional story, but it brings in a lot of nonfiction elements. Um, I need to go back and read it again. I mean, this man, he was a, I wrote his name down because I didn't want to forgive it. Get it. David is the character's name and he lost everything. He was a big top executive. And then his daughter uh, gets sick with an illness. He doesn't have money to pay for her medical bills. And he goes back in time through all these different places and, and learns how to make seven important decisions. So good. Traveler's Gift. That's by Andy Ingram. Uh -huh. uh, the next that sounds one. Good. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, C.S. Lewis, Screw Tape Letters. Now, I had to, it took me a little bit to read that book just because if y'all have ever read any of C.S. Lewis' work, I mean, he uses big words and we, we don't write or talk that way anymore, but it's beautiful. No. His writing is just so beautiful. And yeah. Screw Tape Letters to me right now, it just really connects with what we're seeing in the world, uh, what we're facing with the evil in the world. And I mean, that's probably another one I need to go back and read. But I dog-eared in that book. I underlined so many phrases. Mm -hmm. um, I think those two have been very, very impactful for me. Yeah, definitely. Screw Tip Letters is always interesting to read through. And it's it's amazing how, you know, a book written what, back in yeah. the 50s, 60s. Yeah. yeah. You know, no matter when you read it, it's applicable to whatever yeah. time you're in because yeah. it's just the way the enemy works. And yeah, it's it's one of those very powerful books that yeah. you're just like, oh, wow. this is who we're up against. I and, know. Wow. I mean, it's, again, it goes back to giving you those visual characters. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really is. I mean, it, it makes you think about a lot of a stuff. Lot of things. I, those, two, those two would be my top top two. Those are good. I'll have to check out the Traveler's Gift. Yeah, it sounds so interesting. Oh, so good. <laughs> kind of a, a wonderful life yeah. spin with some yes. life there. <laughs> well, um, when did you first call yourself a writer, Karis? You know, I have struggled with this. Um, you know, people will ask me um, over the last few years, you know, what do you do? And if my husband is with me, I will look at him and he's like, you're a writer and a speaker? Like, say the words. I, don't, I think it was a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like, no, this is not, not who I am. But probably after the tween devotionals last year came out, I started having to realize this is, this is what I do. You know, I, this is my job. I am a writer. I'm a speaker. And so when people ask me that, I don't have to hesitate. Like I can say that. And if they ask me questions, great. And if they don't, it's okay. So it's probably taken me honestly up until last year to just be able to say it Mm -hmm. and not, you know, pause and be like, I think this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I do this. <laughs> I, know. I know that may sound silly, but that's just me. I, true. That's really kind of how my, my process has been the last yeah. few years. Yeah. It's one of those things is writing is almost like, even if you have books, it's an intangible concept of yeah. how to do things. And so, you know, it's always interesting to find out who is struggling with that, yeah. putting that title on ourselves. I always say I'm a full-time mom and a part-time writer. So. That's good. <laughs> I like that one too. I may have to remember that one as Go well. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, if you could spend a day with another writer, living or dead, who would you pick? Okay. So again, I'm probably, I don't follow the rules very well with you. I have to again. And so I'm sorry that it's that uh, <laughs> But if I it's not the question who you have dinner with, you know, the five people. It's, yeah. <laughs> I would have to pick C.S. Lewis again. I just think he is so fascinating. I would just yeah. love, you know, just, just to hear him personally mm -hmm. say his story, just to talk to him. But also another writer, her name's Allie Worthington. Um, she's got another book out coming here in the next few weeks. But she wrote one during, it came out during COVID called Standing Strong. Um, and it's, it's a powerful book. It's a great book for us as women, uh, you know, very much within the, the faith-based world, business world. She's actually my coach. She's coached me through a lot of things. We have not, again, we have not physically met. She is also a huge theme park person. So I feel like we would have a great time together if we met face-to-face. -face. But that, those would be my two to pick. But if I'm only going to pick one, 
I would probably pick Allie. I would probably pick her. <laughs> you guys need to find a theme park somewhere in, in between where you live. And I know. Let's just meet here. <laughs> I know. Nashville, so it shouldn't be that hard for us to figure that out. There's got to be a theme park between them. Yeah. them and oh, we got Dollywood. We could totally do Dollywood. Oh, Dollywood. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is your favorite book other than the Bible? You mentioned most impactful was a tra uh, traveler's gift, and but what's your favorite book? I honestly, that one is probably my favorite. I've read it multiple times. Um, I was sitting here just trying to think through, even as you were talking. I think that's been my favorite book okay. that I've read in the last probably. Mm, 10 years um, just because I I think that was one of the first books I had ever read that took in that fictional element and mm -hmm. brought those nonfiction pieces too. Um, I had never seen a writer do that before right. and how they brought in, you know, just the life lessons, his brought in his faith, but also he wrote it in a way, if you're not uh, a, who, a, who's a believer, a follower of Christ, it's going to be something that really kind of spurs some questions in you and causes you to think about things. Um, so I, I think I would pick that one. Sticking with the same one. I think so. <laughs> okay, well, what is your favorite children's book other than your own? Yes, children's books. As a teacher, you know, we love children's books, board books, all the books. You know, we just love them. Um, Eric Carle has been one of my favorite children's books writers. I mean, mm -hmm. I would use him when I would develop curriculum. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Mm -hmm. I think that was my favorite one of his, The Very Hungry Caterpillar also. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just had so many great books and how he would use rhyme and, and the illustrations were just so so fun mm -hmm. so i still think i don't know where it is we moved a year ago i have a box of all my books that i would that i had in my classroom mm -hmm. um, i have a ton of eric carl books in there so i i just loved i loved him good night moon was a favorite one of my girls when we would read mm -hmm. books at night um and it was a, like a board book and those pages are all bit up you know what i mean so oh yeah favorite yes. for us to read together yeah uh, we was it the Eric Carlisle books we have are just books I can't get rid of. It's like, like, like I'll go through my books and be like, okay, I need to get rid of some of these. But it's like, I just can't say goodbye to these books. I know I could go buy them again if I really wanted to. But you just read them over and over and just have just so much fun with them. There was so much, they're so simple, but so much you could, I don't know, engage with your kids. And yeah. you're just like, who comes next? Who comes next? You know, just at that young age where you're just trying to build that love of reading and so yes I, yeah, yeah love <laughs> too fun okay well what are you reading right now so you can't say the traveler's game i'm not i'm not reading twice <laughs> um, so i actually need y'all's advice on what to pick up and read next okay. my daughters and i are going through a book together right now it is called 10 Ultimate Truths Every Girl Should Know. Um, Carrie Kompakis wrote this book. It's really geared towards your uh, 10 to 14 age range. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been reading this one together. It's been a slow read just because we are doing it a little bit together. But I need suggestions of what do I read next? Do I read fiction? Do I, do I read nonfiction? As a nonfiction writer, I do like to read fiction because it helps me to be a better writer, I think. Right. Um, so if you have a suggestion, I am open. Hmm. Let's see. Well, since I write children's books, I read a lot of children's books. <laughs> so that may not be very helpful. <laughs> But um, what is it? There's a recent series that's called the Dreamkeeper Saga, which is actually for, I guess, tweens. Okay. Not quite YA, but not quite early chapter books. So it's kind of in that funky space. But they're very engaging, lots of allegory. You know, there's a character mm -hmm. that's um, kind of the Christ figure, and you're kind of following him and several other characters as they experience their this fantastical world and the problems that we have in everyday life in different situations so that's been kind of a big hit around here this summer i wrote that down i'm gonna have to look that up <laughs> so i totally recommend that one yeah <laughs> well what can we expect next from you Karis? okay so 
I will say very quickly, moms, I have something coming for you. It's going to be the end of August, August 29th. Uh, it's a devotional for moms, Carline Mom devotional. You know, we live our life from one line to the other, toddlers to teenager. It could be going to school, going to activities, going to friends' houses. We are in our vehicles a lot with our kids. And uh, we all at times feel overwhelmed, overworried, overstressed. And if you're over it, if you're like, no, I'm done with all of this, mm -hmm. you need to get this devotional. It's it's going to be great. It's 100 days of encouragement, you know, just to help us just to get into God's presence mm -hmm. and get in his overflow and let him just love on us, speak to our hearts, see ourselves the way he does, and uh, just help us to move forward. So that is uh, Carline Mom coming August 29th. That's awesome. I mean got three kids and what is it I've always I grew up with my parents always picking me up and dropping me off at school and I found that such a sweet time with my parents that I do it with my kids too and my husband's like they can ride the bus you know I'm like no that is such sweet time for us just to sit and we play cards and we read books together it's it's a time to decompress together and I you know, do spend a lot of time in the car so I might have to I know grab one of those too <laughs> perfect in your glove yeah. compartment or your yeah. bag or your purse like it is the perfect size um so I, i'm just excited to have this for for moms i've been reading through it myself i'm like this is i needed this encouragement today it's just so cool how god will use words that he drops down in you you know just mm -hmm. to remind you of those same same truths we all need those reminders every day every so, day yeah every day well karis where can people find out more about you so so they can find me on my website at karissnyder.com. That's C-A-R-I-S-S-N-I-D-E-R.com. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Kara Snyder. I love to uh, hang out here on Instagram, especially, you know, reach out to me, message me. I love to have conversations with everybody. I have a YouTube page as well, which is my name. And then I do have a podcast called Car Line Conversations, where I do record while I am sitting in the car line. So they're short. <laughs> 15 minutes, you know, once a week, you know, we just talk about real struggles, but also real hope. Very cool. Well, I am so thankful to have some time with you today to talk about the, your book coming out here August 1st. There's an elephant on my chest. And yes, here I'm it is. Just, one more time. Yay. yay! I'm so excited for what that book's going to communicate to kids and even to parents too, because sometimes when you're a busy mom, a children's book is really all that your brain can handle. <laughs> That's right. It's the truth. Yes. Yes. So, well, thank you so much for joining us and look forward to this children's book and then your Carline, Carline Conversations devotional too coming up. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for having me today. Thank you so much. Have a great one. All right. You too. Thank you for joining our chat today. I hope you enjoy getting to know Karis and hear more about her book. Next month, we'll be talking with Leslie Coleman about her books, Our Goodnight Prayer, and her latest release, I Want You to Know. Be sure to subscribe and join us again next month. Happy reading.